and they know about my background working at the Olympics and working in private enterprise and, of course, working as governor. And they were unanimous. They told us that we should proceed. And so I began yesterday a new campaign, and I'm here to offer that campaign to you. With them behind me, with the great people of South Carolina in front of me, with Ann at my side, I want you to know that I intend to run for President of the United States. by what they love, what they believe, and what they dream. I love America, and I believe in the people of America. I believe in God, and I believe that every child and daughter of God is a member of the same human family, whether born in this country or throughout the entire world. I love this country. I love what it stands for. I think we should recognize a belief that is fundamental to us, which is that of the family. The family is under attack in our society. It needs to be protected and strengthened. I also believe that we should respect the sanctity of human life. I believe that as people that we should also have elected officials and the people themselves write the laws and not unelected judges. I think taxed and government is overfed and that we should stop spending so much money in Washington. Yeah. Homeland, security, Homeland security should start with securing our borders. Yeah. And I believe that the best days of this country, the best days of America, are ahead of us because fundamentally I believe in America. Now we, I want to take just a moment and talk about three different areas. First, I want to talk about our role in the world. Secondly, our role here, what we're doing in this country. And third, our need to strengthen the American family and help the American family. Now today we stare at some pretty scary things. We have jihadists who want to cause our collapse. We have nations that are considering nuclear ambition, which could be extraordinarily threatening to the future of our world. The best ally of peace is a strong America. Our role, in, our role in the world, however, should not just be defined by our might, but also by our goodness, our willingness to share and to lead and to care for other nations. Even within our own, in our own hemisphere, we're going to have to do our best to fight for democracy and freedom because we now have a second strongman is trying to exert his influence over our hemisphere. In the world of Africa, we have people who are diseased and brutalized. We need to help them and pull them into a, a, uh, a world that's, uh, that's more forgiving and generous and healthy. As you look to the Muslim nations, I believe that all the nations of the civilized world should come together and form a partnership and help move moderate, modern Islamic nations towards additional modernity and allow them to reject the jihad. And I also believe that when it comes to Iran and their nuclear ambitions, that all the nations of the civilized world need to come together and say absolutely no. In this world, there will be no excuse for engaging with and negotiating with jihadists who have as their intent destroying America, destroying our friends, and destroying our way of life. chat about Iraq for a moment. I know there's a great debate over this country about Iraq, and I believe that the American people, as they look more and more at this issue, will come to believe as I do. And that is that we, of course, want our troops to come home as soon as they possibly can. We want them here. We want them safe. We love them. They're our sons and daughters. We want them here. We also recognize that we don't want to have them come back in such a way that would cause them to have to go back in even larger numbers with greater casualties and to have greater casualties for our own people here. So we have to think of this in a very wise way. And let's think about the considerations. If we were just to go in the wrong way and just walk out, why well, then the kinds of things that might happen would be these. The Shia portion of the south part of Iraq could be grabbed by Iran, now becoming a nuclear ambition power. The Sunni portion of Iraq could become an Al-Qaeda outpost. It could become a base for terrorism. 
the Kurdish portion of, of Iraq could destabilize the borders with Turkey. And all of these things have the potential of engulfing the Middle East in a much broader conflict beyond the borders of Iraq. And nations that are our friends could also become involved. And we could find ourselves having to go back again in larger numbers. We do not want to go there. And that's why I believe the President is right to say we should expand the role of our military to include the safety of the civilian population so they can rebuild their country. And I support his decision to bring additional troops to Iraq. Of course, no matter how we resolve the matter in Iraq, one thing is clear, and that is we have to honor and care for the veterans who served there and who served in prior wars. We have a, a, a sacred pact in this country for those who risked their lives and for the families of those who made the ultimate sacrifice, and that pact can never be broken. We also have some challenges at home, let me mention. And you know some of those. We're, we're seeing ourselves uh, in a setting where I'm convinced that if we take the right course, we can take advantage of our opportunities and we can overwhelm our challenges. There are some people who, as they look at the course that we should set, take their lead from places like Europe. And they say, you know what we need if we have challenges? We need a bigger government that takes care of people. We need more taxes. We need more regulations to protect people from themselves. We need people to tell us how to run our lives and our livelihood. It's called the welfare state. Didn't work there, not going to work here. It's led to high unemployment there and anemic job growth. We do not need the European way in this country. <laughs> source of America's strength is the American people, not our government. It's the American people, hardworking, educated, willing to sacrifice for their families and for their future and for their country. People who believe fundamentally in God, people who believe in the sanctity of life, people who believe in family as the basis of our society, people who are free. And if you want to see America face up to whatever challenges we face, you turn to strengthen the American people, not to strengthen the American government. strengthen the American people. We strengthen the American people by giving them more freedom, by letting American people keep more of the earnings that they have, by improving our schools, by making sure people have health care they can afford it, they can stay with them throughout their life, by making sure that America stays at the edge, the cutting edge, the leading edge of innovation and technology. Look, we face really challenging times overseas, these jihadists and those that would attack us. Here, spending too much money, schools that are letting too many of our kids fall behind. We face an extraordinary explosion in the amount of energy we're using. We have hospitals and healthcare systems that don't care for all of our citizens. We've got challenges, but there's no question about it. The source of overcoming those challenges is the strength of the American people, and now is time to put our commitment and our trust in those American people.